Brendan. My name is Bob. I'm from Seattle, Washington. My wife Cindy over here. And I uh, don't know how many years we've been here, but uh, I think this is my seventh year at Bridgeway. Every year I get here, I meet so many different new people. I think I know them all. Yeah, that's a really cool thing. We've got a lot of new folks here this year. Uh, pretty exciting for me to see. Um, my topic today is going to be pretty short and sweet, <clears throat> which I prefer because it's a great day and I know you guys want to get out in cars, so we're going to just really focus on that. Spatial perception. This is a, a term that I learned here about a year ago, and it was explained to me as <clears throat> something that we all have in common. Not just the same mother, right? Okay, it's spatial perception. This is how we perceive objects in the world and and they're in relation to us in space to put that in layman's terms if you go to the mall and you look at that little map that's going to guide you through the mall to get you to the coffee shop on the other side of the mall you see the map and you visualize in your head how to get there and get there on time how do we relate that to carving Whatever your subject is, you decide you're going to carve a bird, a bear, doesn't matter, fill in the blank. You visualize it, you see the picture of, or an example of your sculpture, what you want. And you have one plane, one view. What we can do, what we have in common, is to be able to visualize in our head, rotate that, and, and place that in three dimension within a log. I don't know for sure if that's a... Uh, a learned trait or an inherited trait or or what um, some of us you know are just gifted with that some of us I think have to really work hard at it but that's what that's our common bond that's our connecting factor um, there's probably some really great 25 cent words and great in-depth explanations about Scott will probably he'll I bet he'll enlight you that like that tomorrow <laughs> Put Scott on this. <laughs> you know, we talk a little bit about this stuff, and it's, uh, you know, everybody I talk to, basically we have the same basic concept about that. Um, you guys, do you know what I'm saying when I'm speaking about that? I mean, does anybody really relate to that? Or am I, is it just me? <laughs> Not just me? I read the forums. And, you know, I look at the different stuff that, that's on there, and I think it was one of the journalist gal that was here last year, and she, she talked about doing a paper on that. And, and to me, I found that extremely interesting, that, that uh, we have that common connection. So I guess what my focus is is to, to help get people to really pay attention to what that is and why you feel what you're, and see what you're seeing, and how to put that into the wood, how to put that into your saw, how to perceive things in the world. It's, I don't know about how spiritual that is or anything like that. I just start my saw and carve, but it's how I do what I do. Uh, for me, it comes pretty fast. I have a really short attention span. We've talked about that. So I have to carve everything I can really fast before I forget what I'm thinking. <laughs> At any rate. That's kind of what I wanted to touch on with that. My next little thing I wanted to hit, this is exciting stuff to me. And can, I, can I just join in because you talked Absolutely. about that a little bit last night and you kind of left out a part. And how he's relating that to is you see a picture, you, somebody says they want you to carve a goat, and you see the picture of the goat, you, you download a picture, and, and, and some people can look at that picture and carve a goat. And what they're seeing is just by the face picture of the goat, you don't see the back of the goat, you don't see the sides of the goat, but in your mind, you can picture what that goat looks like in the lines and the bone structure and everything in your mind from that frontal picture. Some people like me, I can't see that. I always say, how do you do a three-dimensional carving? Because I don't, I don't get how, how do you know what the back looks like? But a, a lot of you guys are able to look at that front of the picture and go, well, yeah, the bone goes here, so it would be over here on the back side. And you're able to visualize that. It, well, it, it does, exactly. It helps you establish balance, scale, 
uh, anatomy, it, it forces us to study anatomy. I know it does me, uh, because you know I perceive in my head what that is, but is it correct? Really starting to pay much more attention to all those little nuances, all the details that make a goat a goat. Um, from a distance, we see a, a quick glimpse uh, of someone or something just really quickly, but and we relate in our head what that was, even though it was just a glimpse, and we recognize that person. Even if it's a profile in the dark, we know who that was. That's that perception that we have, and we retain that. And training yourself for that, that's, that's, maybe that's why we're all here every year, to help learn that, help share, help advance on that. Anybody want to touch on that before I move on? Good. We got some cool stuff here this year, and what I want to share next is this. This, uh, this is called a Power Now cordless chainsaw. All our chainsaws, for the most part, are cordless. I realize, but this is a battery-powered one. There's also another one, Tim Madsen. If you catch up with him out there, he's got a steel brand. This is made by Oregon. This is re really exciting to me. Um, for those of you in the cold climate, can really connect with this because you can work on this in your bathroom. If you want. <laughs> I mean, you can use this little saw to pass around anywhere. In a, uh, you just can't do that. I mean, you can do indoor demos and such with these. To me, that's really cool because with uh, the way technology goes nowadays, <clears throat> I think it's really going to be a short amount of time before. These things are available in larger saws, longer battery life. Right now, that's a, an issue with both the steel and the Oregon. If buy enough batteries, I can. I have four right now, four batteries and two chargers, and I can cycle those and just carve continuously with that. That's a big investment because of the expense of batteries, but it's a capability that we didn't have a year ago. They're two hundred dollars for the high endurance battery. Sorry. How long is one? One battery, and I ran this for almost a month for Oregon when we were testing it out. Uh, one battery gets fifteen minutes of hard carving, solid carving. I mean, always in the wood. That's and, and, you know, when I ran it, I just abused the crap out of it because that's what we're going to do. We want every ounce of everything we get out of it. That's like, and they talked about that and for battery life. It's a thousand or 12, between a thousand and twelve hundred cycles of charge per battery. Um, How long does it take to recharge? One hour. One hour. They do have available. I haven't used it yet. A quick charger. Um, it, that's why the the two chargers. Um, Oregon doesn't currently yet have like still has the little belt clip for these batteries. That's a really neat thing. I think that's probably going to happen. A little bit jealous about that with steel. On the flip side of that, back to a tethered cord, it's to your body, but it does take a lot of weight off of this. So I want to pass this around. You guys can check it out, do what you want. The battery pack. Before um, you pass it, do you want to show the chain sharpening yeah. part? That's my next point. So, anyway.